In this video, we will find the slope and the y-intercept of lines when we're given the graph of the line or a table of values for the line. Um, we'll also actually write the formula in slope-intercept form for the function. Now, first of all, recall that the slope of a line, which we usually uh, designate with the letter m, the slope m, is the change in the y-value divided by the change in the x-value change in y over change in x. We use the Greek symbol delta to represent change, so we say delta y over delta x. So if you're traveling from point 1 to point 2 on a line, we might call the values in point 1 x1, y1, because it's point 1, and we call the values in point 2 x2, y2, because it's point 2. And so the change in y over change in x would be the difference between the y values, y2 minus y1, divided by the difference in the x values, x2 minus x1. Also recall the slope-intercept form of a line is f of x equals mx plus b, where m is that slope, that change in y over change in x value, and 0b is the y-intercept of the line. So when we see the form of a line mx plus b, it's called slope-intercept form because you can see the slope and the y-intercept. In the first example, I have a table of values for a function f of x. To find the slope, if it is linear, it will have a constant slope. To find it, we recall that slope is change in the y divided by change in the x. I see in this table, as I travel from negative 2 to negative 1, my x values went up 1. And as my x values went up 1, my y values went down 3. So the change in y over change in x is down 3 over 1, or just negative 3. That pattern continues since it's linear. Over 1, down 3. Over 1, down 3. Over and over and over again. The change in y over change in x is a constant fixed value, negative 3. The slope is negative 3. m is negative 3. The y-intercept of the line is the point on the graph where the x value is 0. If x were 0, you'd land right on the y-axis. So I go to the table and I find where the x value is 0. That's right here. x is 0, y is 6. So the y-intercept is the point 0, 6. Now remember, formula of a line can be written y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. And now we know the slope is negative 3, the y-intercept is 6, so this line can be written as f of x equals negative 3x plus 6. The slope is negative 3, the y-intercept is 6. In the second example, again we're given a table of values. I'm asked to find the slope here first. So if it is a linear function, it will have a constant slope, a constant change in y over change in x. So let's see if this one does. It's not as obvious in this table as in the last example. Let's see how the function values change as the x's change. The first uh, point traveling to the second point, I went over plus 7. And then to travel from negative 70 to negative 35, you went up 35. So the change in y over change in x would be 35 over 7, or just 5. Let's see if that pattern of over 1, up 5 continues for all the other points. So in the next, I went over 1, up 5. So there, the change in y over change in x would be up 5 over 1, or just 5. So still 5. 
In the next series of points, I go over 5. And here I went from negative 30 to negative 5, so I went up 25. So change in y over change in x. I went up 25. I went over 5. And again, it simplifies to just slope is 5. The next one, I went over 10. And as I went over 10, I went up 50. So change in y over change in x is 50 over 10, which is 5. Still 5. And lastly, I traveled from 15 to 30. So I went over 15. And if I go from 45 to 120, I go up 75. So change in y over change in x would be 75 over 15, which again is 5. So no matter which series of points I travel between, the slope is a constant value of 5. The slope of this line is 5. No matter where I start on the line, if I go over 1, up 5, I'll land back on the line. I see in the table the y-intercept is the point where the x value is 0. The y-intercept is 0, negative 30. And so, again, if we can write the equation of a line as f of x equals mx plus b. m is the slope, b is the y-intercept, so just plug them in the formula. f of x equals 5x minus 30. Slope is 5, y-intercept is negative 30. And there's the equation of that line. Now uh, we're given a graph of a line, clearly it's, it's a line, and we want to find the slope, y-intercept, and formula. The slope of the line is the change in y over change in x. It has a constant slope. No matter where I start on the line, I should be traveling over and up, over and up, the same constant ratio. Let's start from this point 0, negative 4, and travel to the point 3, negative 2. To travel from 0 over to 3, I went over 3. And to travel up, I went up 2. So change in y over change in x. I went up 2 over 3. It's a slope of 2 thirds. I could do the same traveling from 3, negative 2, to 6, 0. I have to go up 2. And I have to go over 3. So again, the change in y over change in x, I went up 2 over 3. So the slope of this line is 2 thirds. The y-intercept is the point on the graph where the x value is 0. It's the point on the graph where the graph hits the y-axis. So that's this point here, 0, negative 4. f of x equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So in this case, f of x equals 2 thirds x minus 4. And lastly, again we're given a graph. I want to find the slope, which is change in y over change in x. So I'll travel from one point to another. So traveling from 0, 20,500, down to 30, 10,000. I go over 30, 10,500. So the change in y is down 10,500. So I express that with a negative, negative 10,500. And I went over 30. And just simplifying that, I get negative 350. And again, you could check that with the other points on the graph and make sure you still get this constant slope over 1, down 350, over 1, down 350, no matter which points you travel between. The ratio of change in y over change in x is fixed, over 1, down 350. I see on the graph that the y-intercept is 0, 20,500. And so, f of x equals mx plus b, so f of x equals negative 350x plus 20,500.